in unit 1 lesson 5 the pollination and fertilization you have learned the types of pollination and how nature favors self pollination how nature favors cross pollination and advantages disadvantages of self pollination advantages and disadvantages of cross pollination and also differences between self pollination and cross pollination so i think you have learned them thoroughly there are several questions diagram based questions diagrams in that particular unit now we are moving to the agents of cross pollination the two commonest agents of cross pollination are insects and wind but some cases some flowers are pollinated by certain animals like birds squirrels bats elephants got it sometimes even by water aquatic plants if you take hydrophytes and aquatic plants by water also they get pollinated got it each category of flowers has some special features got it to maximize the chance of pollination to favor the chances of pollination now we are going to learn categories one by one insect pollinated flowers they are also called as entomophilus flowers entomo means insect philly means affinity attraction got it insect pollinated flowers are also called as entomophilus flowers and insect pollination is called entomophily is it clear now flowers are usually large and they also have brightly colored because they have to attract insects they usually emit scent to attract again insect nice flavor jasmine nice odor nice odor means they scent they attract the insects and they produce nectar which is food for the insects the pollen grains are sticky or spiny to enable them to be carried by the insects easily the moment insect sits on the flower pollen grain if it is sticky it will go and stick isn't it so like that they are sticky the stigma is sticky and does not generally hang out from the flower they will not hang out they will be in their own place when the insects come the sticky stigma attracts the pollen grains the flowers tend to be in clusters to make them conspicuous very conspicuously very brightly they, if they are small also in vixora and all no children we find the flowers formed into a bunch if they are in bunch the insects will attract them easily whereas if the especially in the cases where individual flowers are small dahlia etc sunflower and all now coming to wind pollination wind pollination is also called anemophily anemo means wind philly means again affinity so wind pollinated flowers are called anemophilous flowers flowers are usually small here because wind does not attract so they just wind will blow isn't it the flowers are small they are usually not brightly colored and often dull and green they are light children they do not produce scent or nectar nectar to so say all these are not required flower need not go and attract wind isn't it the stamens are long and hang out of the flowers to be exposed to the wind they are exposed and hanging out only now they are hidden inside they will not fly isn't it they should go blow away through the wind so usually they'll have long and hanging out stem the anthers are large and loosely attached to the filament so that slightest wind may move them and they can fly got it this kind of thing is called versatile anther the condition is called versatile anther pollen is produced in very large quantities pollen grains are light dry smooth and so that they can be easily carried away by wind the stigmas are feathery and hang out of the flower to trap the pollen grains like how broom sticks and all are there no? like that they will be hanging out and easily they catch like brush they are 
they can get and the pollen grain can be trapped get trapped in into the stigma is it clear now so the wind pollinated flowers are small not brightly colored and they do not produce scent and the anthers are stamen are long and hang out and anthers are also large and loosely attached so that small slightest wind also they can be blown off and the very large quantities of pollen will be produced because most of them gets wasted and they are light dry and smooth and the feathery and hang out the stigmas will will be present to trap the pollen grains now we'll move moving on to the water pollinated flowers water pollination water hydro means water so they are also called as hydrophilus flowers and water pollination is called hydrophily phily means affinity here this water pollination most of the aquatic plants isn't it hydrophytes it takes place pollen grains are produced in large numbers in some plants the pollen grains have a specific gravity almost equal to that of water so that they remain floating below the surface of the water if they are lighter their light are equal to the water so that they can float if they are heavier no children they go sink so a specific gravity will be either equal or lesser so that they float on the water surface in some special cases male flowers are such that they float on the surface of water till they meet female flowers something na nature got it something nature favors them they get they will be staying in the water floating in the water till they reach the female flower and one more important thing is they have long pedicels children you have you seen lotus and nelumbium they have long stalks so that female flowers will have long stalk so that they can be on the surface and easily can attract the male flowers got it so example of the uh, wind i mean water pollination water pollinated flowers are valley valis neria now examples of wind pollinated flowers roses they have sent jasmine hibiscus they are insect pollinated flowers now examples of wind pollination maize grass rice etc and example of water pollinated flowers valis neria now we are moving to the other kinds there are some other kinds also some flowers are pollinated by birds they are called ornithophilus flowers and bird pollination is called ornithophily example begonia and canna and there are some flowers pollinated by elephant you might think elephant should pollinate means big very big flowers rafflesia got it elephophily what elephant does it keeps its leg it doesn't know where it is moving it is very tall animal no children so it keeps one leg on the rafflesia generally rafflesia flower will be on the floor children of the forest they keep one leg on one rafflesia flower another leg on another rafflesia flower like that the pollen which is stuck to the elephant foot will get go and reach the stigma of another flower and that is a rafflesia flower gets pollinated rafflesia whose flowers are very large and are found at ground level they pollen grains are fewer of the they get stuck to the feet of elephants elephants and may carry it out to the stigma of another flower when the flower get trampled to their feet got it that is why it is called elephophily hope you all understood the agents of pollination now we are moving to the artificial pollination sometimes man himself transfer pollen grain to the stigma in the vanilla pods and all no children man himself he wants to ensure cross pollination to get healthier and viable seeds such cases man himself pollinates he takes the pollen grain of one flower to another flower and pollinate in the ancient civilization of babylonia it was very common practice to sprinkle male flowers of the palms on the female flowers those days they did not know these flowers are male these flowers are female but they know one thing by doing such practice 
they get viable seeds got it they they don't know the sexuality at that time got it these days artificial pollination also called as artificial crossing got it this artificial crossing hybridization is a standard pra practice adopted by plant breeders and scientists in their efforts to evolve new varieties they remove the anthers in young flowers and that process is called emasculation when the flower is young itself they take the scissors and cut all the anthers emasculation and cover these flowers with the plastic bags that is called bagging they do that and later the pollinate they pollinate such flowers with the pollen from the plants of the desired variety so that they can get new variety viable and the strong varieties did you all understand children thank you now you are going to get assignment in your description box thank you children